Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know? I'm Angie. This is 4F Beauty. And if I have done my editing correctly, I should be in black and white right now. Don't panic. Glorious Technicolor is coming. Think of it like the Wizard of Oz, but w w without a house dropping on a witch to steal her shoes. Or a psychedelic trip along a yellow road talking to scarecrows and tin men and lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. That really was a psychedelic film, wasn't it? And it's on every Christmas. Anyway. Got sidetracked. My brain does that occasionally. Mm, okay, does that a lot. But you will have been able to tell from the thumbnail, the title, and if you've read any of it, the description. Today, I'm going to be interrupted by my doorbell again. <laughs> Today, I am trying out another one of the e.l.f. four pan palettes. Now the question is, which one? Does it perform as well as the other two that I've tried on here? Do I recommend it? What do I think of the matching brush set that I tried? All these questions and many more will be answered. But you're going to have to watch the film first. Sammy the Sloth Straw confirms you have the best seat in the house. And he would like to remind you that now is the time to grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, get comfy and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey my lovelies, welcome back from the intro. Okay. I would have shown you these in the intro. I probably won't have shown you these because obviously they're going to be used then so they're going to be dirty and I'm not going to really want them in an intro looking dirty. Um, but this is the mint selection that I bought from um, Elf which took ages to arrive. Uh, this has got the all over eyeshadow brush, the eye contour brush and a, a blending brush. And I have got the two mini mint variety. We've got the chocolate mint and mint to be. So chocolate mint is three neutrals and one mint great for work or if you're just starting to get into colour and mint to be is full on greens as you can see the only real repeat shade in them I would say is the light shimmer green but even those are not exactly the same shade hopefully you can get my big old finger out of the way hopefully you can see they're actually not there you go that's actually lighter so I do have another little one of theirs that I need to test out this is the rose water one which is this one and I've, I've already used the uh, hot jalapeno 
and the I see you or I see to be or whatever it was, the blue one. Uh, I have swatched both of these on my hand. Top one, obviously, that's the mint chocolate. That's the mint to be. So you can see that's the colours that we're working with. And I'm going to wipe those off now before I end up wiping them all over me because long term viewers know what a klutz I am. Right, this remains a teaching channel. As such, I go at a speed that beginners can keep up with. Partly because of my chronic pain though, to be honest. Uh, so if you are um, more capable than me, or not living with chronic pain, and you can blend quicker than me, feel free to speed me up. Really, really not an issue. These are quite soft actually, so that's nice. So, blending brush, I would then use this as the crease brush and this to pack it on the lid. Um, as part of it being a teaching channel, I also zoom in really close so it's only my eyes that are on screen. I do this for a couple of reasons, partly so that if you've not got the best eyesight and you're watching me on a phone you can still see what's going on but also because with my chronic pain it's much easier to cut bits out where I'm wincing without it being obvious that there's a cut in the actual film. Um, it does mean <clears throat> that when I'm looking down to I don't know, put more powder on the brush or clean the brush. You do get a lovely shot of my widow's peak. But I have been informed by my wee Viking Scottish friend who happens to make wigs that... Uh, I'm really sorry, well, that was the worst Scottish accent ever. Um, apparently a widow's peak costs more if you have it in your wig because it gives an air of authenticity. Who knew? Right, I'm going to insert a clip in just a minute because I see a lot of people with deep set eyes, even really big beauty gurus, who say they've got hooded lids. And I haven't, they've got deep set eyes. <clears throat> so, yeah. The clip will be up really close again, so just my eyes on screen, and it will talk you through how to work out the difference between deep set eyes and hooded lids and how best to approach them in terms of applying makeup because although they wear very similarly throughout the day because of parts of the lid rubbing against itself the actual application process for them is a little bit different so at the other end of the clip I'll be back to apply some coloured pigments onto my eyes. I will try these e.l.f. brushes and if I decide that I'm not getting on with them very well I will change to one of my ordinary brushes instead. Right, here's your clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crown Pebble Primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15% and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So, unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now, she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest. The deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one 
that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes. So I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much, if not more, lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So. What are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using. Just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Okay, I'm going to start off with this Really, they've put white writing, really small, on a mint background. Right. And you expect me to be able to read that, do you? Blending. Blending, that's what it says. My eyes are not that old. They are that old, but they're not that old. Right. Uh, surprising no one, I've gone for the all green. Um, it doesn't give you, I don't think, specific shade names on the back. No, I can't see any. But then there are only four shades. So I'm going to start off with this one. And I'm going to move on to this one. And then I'm probably going to use a combination of both of these on my lid. Okay? Okay. Um, I always hold the brush at the very end to put as little pressure on my lid as possible. If the handle's long enough you can brace it against the palm of your hand to give you a little bit more stability at this end. And as always I'm going to be doing the Viennese Waltz Blend which is circular movements towards the nose, a flicker when we get there and then reverse turns to come back. So we've got natural turns Fleckles and reverse turns. 
The reason I do that rather than just relying on the windscreen wiper is I'm 46 years old, I've lost over 14 stone, that's over 200 pounds. The skin on my eyelids moves. But I know slim teenagers who have similar issues, so it can just be genetic. And by doing the Viennese waltz, you are gently manipulating the lid round. Ooh, fair amount of kick up there, look. That's fine, I've tapped off. I can always pick that back up to build pigment up or, you know. Yeah, if you just rely on the windscreen wiper, you end up with those telltale white lines where your lid's folded over on itself. Not good. And I always start at the outside edge here. Because if you do end up putting too much pigment down, it's much easier to deal with it when your nose is not in the way. Tapped off a little bit too much of the pigment, I think. So, obviously, it's going to be quite a simple look today because I'm only using the four shades. I was contemplating using the eight shades together or doing like a mix and match of them. But I figured you're not necessarily... I mean, I bought both because... I'm addicted to makeup and I collect makeup and yeah couldn't resist basically um, but you're not necessarily going to do that you might only get one of the um, palettes you may not you may not want both of them the reason I like these um, we're in a bubble with mother-in-law because of her age and also like a mental health support bubble for me which is nice I need it um, so sort of one or two weekends a month we'll pop up on the Saturday evening spend some time with her and then stay overnight Saturday because they um, had like an extension built on their place back in the 80s so we actually sleep in the extension bit anyway and we've got our own bathroom so it's only really when we're in when we're downstairs that we're kind of mixing with them so that's fine um, Mum did her first jab, waiting on the second one. I've not had one yet. Apparently, fibromyalgia, being an autoimmune disease, doesn't class me as um, significant enough to need jabbing this early, which I guess in one way is a good thing that they don't think I'm going to be that badly affected, but Things that I almost died of pneumonia on my 43rd birthday. Literally, I came down with pneumonia two days before my 43rd birthday. Um, and still having a slight whistle on my lungs now, you know, three and a half, nearly four years later. It um, would have been nice to be included in the first rung, but never mind. Anyway, we sort of stick around overnight. And then Sunday lunchtime, brother-in-law does really nice roast. I've taught him how to cook very well indeed. Um, okay, that blended really nicely. And for a pastel, it actually built up quite well as well. I was quite impressed with that. Right, I'm going to change to this brush, which they call the... Oh, give me half an hour so I can try and read it. Eye contour. Either my eyes are getting better, or this one's a little bit more strongly printed. But basically, I've gone from a big old fluffy to slightly more tapered to give me a bit more control through the crease. This is a point if you've moved your crease, 
that you now put this next shade wherever you've moved your crease to. So obviously I'm going to go into the only matte, only other matte in here, which is the deep green. Sometimes simplicity is nice though, that's that's what I was saying. It's I've got the, um, the Earth and Ocean palette from e.l.f., which is effectively the Hot Jalapeno and the ICU that I've got in the little four pan. So I'm like, you might think, why have I got both? Well, quite simply because I use the Earth and Ocean palette here, because obviously it does have more than just eight shades in it. But also, now is that someone coming to my door or is that next door's girls sliding down the path? So I'll find out in a minute. Um, the little four pan ones fit perfectly into the overnight bag that I take to mother-in-law's. And I don't have to think about it too much on the Sunday morning. Because I do occasionally imbibe a little on the Saturday evening. Because I don't I don't drink that much anymore, mainly because the tablets I'm on and everything. But also because whenever we go anywhere I'm always the driver. And I've never really been one for drinking at home. So, when we go to mum's I'll have a couple of G&T's or a couple of fruit ciders or something. So, Sunday morning I'm not hungover but I just, if I have too much choice I'll be sitting there for bloody ages, you know, trying to decide what to do. Whereas if you've only got, do I want to wear blues today or do I want to wear greens today? Fabulous, that's an easy choice. And then there's only, you know, four colours to choose from in the actual um, palette itself, which is ideal. So, and obviously once we can start travelling again, I'll have those two, I'll have this one, and probably these two as well. And then... You know, I could be away for a week and I've still got plenty of different options that I can mix and match with. So I could mix some of these greens in with some of the hot jalapeno. So yeah, I, I am actually really enjoying this. Greens are a very are one of the most difficult colours to do. Purple, green and blue are difficult. So the fact that these are blending out so very nicely, I am really impressed. And you can see that's, there's a little bit of skipping just here but I have got a particularly dry patch just here at the moment on my lid. So I think it's most likely that because it's been playing, it's been boogering about for a few days now when I'm putting shadows on. That's nice, I like that. I'm quite liking this brush as well. Doing my usual, flicking the brush up at the edge there to give me the effect of a wing so that if my eyes are particularly watery and I can't put eyeliner on or I'm just not in the mood for eyeliner or I haven't got the energy or the spoons or the time to do eyeliner you can get the same effect using your eyeshadow, which obviously is what I'm doing here. And it gives you that effect of lifting the outer edge of the eye. 
I struggle in here because you can see I've got that super deep creasing there. That was caused by the ophthalmic hospital pulling my eye around when I was five, six years old. It's the only thing I can put it down to because the other eye is not that bad yet. So. When I put the shimmer on the lid, I do have to break my own rule about not stretching the lid out because otherwise what happens is that I end up with it packing loosely into the crease and then as it dries through the day it ends up getting into my eye and falling down my face which is both painful and unsightly. So far I'm really, really liking this little quad. Hmm. I might just use one of them actually for the lid. Right, never put a wet brush into a pressed pigment. But I always wet a pigment um, before I use it. The reason I do that is twofold. One, to help prevent um, some fallout and also it can give it a more higher sheen to the finish than you can get sometimes just with applying it dry. Now I'm going to be using a fixing spray but you can use anything. Um, moisturising spray like MAC or Mario Badescu, um, priming spray, setting spray, finishing spray. You can even just save an empty bottle and put fresh water in it each day that you're doing your, your makeup. Right. I'm going to go into this one here. And I'm using the third brush from that set. Just packing pigment on both sides. Now, this ferrule is now wet, so I'm going to tuck it into my knuckles and spin. Because the last thing we want is moisture getting down here and loosening the bristles that hold it, otherwise you're going to end up with a stick, not a brush. Alright, let's see how this... Oh, pretty, pretty. It's got a nice reflection to it. I always do this the first time I use them. I don't like um, doing a cut crease or putting a glitter glue down or anything. Because I like to see how much opacity the shades have. And that's lovely. I'm just using the tip of the bristles now to just blend it lightly into the matte shade that we've got there. That is super pretty. Mm. Right, I'm going to dry the brush off, go back in and do the other eye. I love these super quick looks. You watch, because of my blethering it won't be a super quick film. But apparently I'm told my blethering can be quite comforting. Because apparently I've got quite a nice voice. Right, so I'm going to show you how I do this without causing too much additional damage to my eye. I only pull the lid out far enough to straighten out those creases and I apply the colour as quickly as I can 
and then gently put the lid back. So I don't pull it out around my ear roll and I don't just let it spring back, I gently place it back. And that way I'm avoiding doing too much additional damage, I hope. I hope I'm preventing doing too much more damage to the lid. And unfortunately, that's the way the cookie crumbles and all that. Hmm. Again, just use the tip of the bristles to just blend it in with the mat there. You can see this lid moves an awful lot more than this one did. Right, my lovely ones. <clears throat> I'm going to pause you while I pop some foundation on and bits and bobs. And I will be back to finish off this eye look. Now for me, I've got a bit of a time for I can chat to you again, but for you, my darlings, it's going to be completely instant. So, uh, see you right now. Hey, my lovely ones. Uh, brows have gone a little bit um, werewolf today, but uh, who cares? I also went a little bit ham with blush draping, but uh, I haven't got to go anywhere, so... <laughs> Actually, I've gone more than just a little bit ham, haven't I? I've gone well ham with it. Let's just pop a little bit of translucent powder back on top of that and try and knock it back a little bit. Oh well. It happens. Happens to the best of us. Right. I'm going to use the brush that I did for that. And obviously I use the dark green through my brows. I'm just going to smudge this along the lower lash line. One of the best things about when it snows is the, the light that we get in the kitchen because obviously I I film in daylight as much as possible and I have the LED light behind the camera not a ring light, just two strip lights and uh, it's so nice because the light coming in through the window today where it's reflecting up off of the snow outside and I've got a, a south facing garden so it gets the sun most of the day it's um, it's really lovely, just beautiful, beautiful shine. Right, I'm going in with this fluffy brush again, just to show that you can actually do the whole look with, but minus the brows, obviously, with the brushes they provide, what them in the set that you can buy, not that they provided, because I bought them. Again, going into that lighter green that I used here. Just softening it under there. Yeah, I grabbed my hourglass bronzer today, completely forgetting how ruddy pigmented it is. And put the same amount on that I do of the butter bronzer, and then looked at myself in the mirror and was like, Oh, look like you've rolled in a bowl of Doritos. Happens to the best of us, folks. It really does. Right, now I'm going to get a little brush. She said trying to find a little brush. Okay. A little brush. And then go into this one here, which obviously we've not used yet. It's the only shade out of this we haven't used. And I'm going to pop a little bit of that just up under the tail of the brow.
and I shall use it for my inner corner. As always, regular viewers know I like to bring mine down under the tear duct and just blend it in with the colour going under the eye. The temptation today just to grab the uh, Club Nebula palette and do another look with that was overwhelming. But I have actually had <laughs> these before I got the Nebula palette. But the Nebula palette arrived and I'm like, no, I want to play with that one first. But I need to play with these and then I can pop them into my overnight bag. And then they're not hanging around in the way. That's pretty. I might. No, I think I'm going to use a pink highlight today. I was going to say, I was going to pop a little bit of that green just at the very top there, but I don't think that's going to work well if I'm using a pink highlight. I'm going to use the um, Lilith Loose Highlight from Chrome Pebble. It's stunning. Right, pause your one last time, stick some of that on, stick some mascara on, choose a lippy, do something with there which is uh, having a moment to itself today. And I will be back with the finished look. And you can truly see the, uh, the overdone blush draping. See you in a moment. I am back, my lovelies. The mascara is this new Maybelline uh, Sky High mascara. It's okay, but it's very wet at the moment. It's, one of, it's very wet. So I, I do find that I'm getting spider feet everywhere um, I'm having to deal with. So what I might do is give it a couple of weeks and then try it again when it would have dried up a little bit because obviously I've used it about four times now so it's had air going into it hopefully it will dry the formula up a little bit the highlight is the Lilith as I was saying how beautiful is that don't forget I have got a discount with Chrome Pebble um, I don't earn from it I just earn pebbles as everybody does when they buy from the site um, and it, they just add up to a small discount next time I order, which is lovely. It usually covers my postage for me. Uh, the Lippy is an Ofra, and it's one they did. It doesn't say on it anywhere, but I remember buying it, and it said it was actually one they'd done with Manny MUA called Charmed. So. What do I think of brushes and get them the right way up and because people are not standing on their head to read this unless they're doing yoga in which case hi <laughs> so eyeshadows brushes what did I think brushes are very nice they're, they're nice and soft um, the same sort of quality I've come to expect from e.l.f. brushes, so if you've used e.l.f. brushes in the past um, and you know what the quality is like then you'll know what these are going to be feeling like um, I'm just cleaning them on a clean washcloth while I talk to you There's, I mean, you can certainly create a full eye look using just those three brushes. And again, they're not massive, they're not travel sized brushes. Because I hate those, because they're, they're tiny little things. These have got a decent length, but they're not as long as the majority of brushes. If I show you, you yeah. know, they're a good three centimetres shorter than a standard brush which means again once you can start travelling or if you're doing any if you've got a bubble that you go to overnight or you know you take a little makeup bag in to work with you to touch up 
again they're going to fit in much nicer so what do I think obviously I've only tried one of these but browns are pretty difficult to bugger up to be quite honest these are the ones that are going to test out whether they've got a decent formula or not and as far as I can tell these are the same formula as the um, the Earth and Ocean palette, the Hot Jalapeno and the ICU or the IC to be or whatever it was um, some of these apparently have been a bit hit and miss on the quality thankfully so far all the ones I've used I've liked obviously I will give this one a go one day when I'm not filming unless you particularly want to see me film with this one if you do just let me know that you want to see chocolate mint so if you want to see me do a look with that let me know um, if you're not too worried then that's fine I'll update you I'm going to try this year to do more update films on these are the palettes I've been using recently and I really like this or I don't like this or my opinion has changed on this one etc but so far for the price of these I think they are a mega mega bargain and absolutely one that I think you should pick up if you like the mint colour scheme and you don't mind not having a huge amount of colours to choose from right okay um, was there anything else I needed to tell you I don't think there was no I don't think there was right okay this is what happens my, my brain goes off for a walk all by itself it usually comes back okay though um, if you are one of my 4F babies, please double check. You are still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing you, but they're leaving my films in your feed. So it's not obvious that you've been deleted. It's also worth double checking your notification status. Again, not just for me, but for all of the channels that you follow. For a minute there, I thought I had lipstick on my teeth. Um, all of my notifications keep getting knocked back to personalised rather than all and then you don't get any emails um, I mean even when mine are set to all at the moment I'm not getting emails so I don't know what's going on there um, but it is definitely worthwhile double checking those not just for me as I said but for other channels that you follow and you want to get told when they upload new films now, if this is the first time you've watched me and you've tripped over me completely by accident, hi, hello, welcome, hope you've enjoyed it here. Uh, this is pretty much a good indication of what you get on this channel. Me blethering at you in what I'm told is a soothing voice, uh, chuntering on about everything important and nothing very important at all, or whilst, usually whilst applying coloured pigments to my face. That sounds like your kind of thing. It would be awesome to welcome into the 4F family because we are the nicest family on YouTube. Super easy to do. Hit that red subscribe button and turn it to grey. Then you ring my bell. Ring my bell. And choose all notifications in the home. YouTube will actually bloody send them. In the meantime, if you're looking for a little bit of me time and you just need to disconnect from the world for a bit as well as this rather ample backside that I am perched upon I have a rather ample back catalogue of films to watch did you see what I did there? did you? did you see that? did you appreciate that? no? okay moving swiftly on I've got a lot of different films I've got other tutorials and product reviews like this one I've got challenges, collabs, tag films, I even read you my favourite poem in one of them. So as I have said now for what feels like forever, basically 
grab a drink, grab a snack, pick a playlist, put your feet up, get comfy my darlings and indulge. Just switch the world off for a bit. Right, my lovely ones, as ever, all that remains for me to say. Is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.